essentially Bare Necessities is a one-stop shop to make sustainable products accessible to you. We have um, things like bamboo toothbrushes. And for me, this kind of envisions what a zero waste lifestyle looks like really well. Um, because, you know, presumably we all wake up in the morning, we use a plastic toothbrush. It takes anywhere from 200 to 700 years to start decomposing. It never fully does. It just breaks into small, tiny pieces of plastic. So basically every toothbrush you and I have ever used is sitting somewhere on our planet. Um, and this is an alternative. It's made out of bamboo and you can compost it and it'll just go back to the earth. Um, so essentially, you know, the premise in which Bare Necessities was created is that we can create earth-friendly products that are high quality, that are um, using only natural ingredients that you recognize, that you know how to pronounce, that aren't packaged in plastic, aren't loaded with chemicals. Um, and essentially we thought there was a huge gap. Um, this FMCG industry that we you know, have seen hasn't seen any innovation in the past 30 years. So I think there is a real need for this. Um, also, we're currently living in the largest global garbage crisis of our lifetime. Um, you know, the IPCC report is out, we know about climate action, we know, um, you know the era in which we're living in. And I think um, es essentially Bare Necessities hopes to inspire a change in lifestyle to a more earth-friendly one. Bare Necessities essentially has personal care, home care and lifestyle products which range from bamboo toothbrushes, soaps, toothpaste, tooth powders, bath salts, but also detergents um, and lifestyle products like little spokes, which are a spoon and a fork, which I thought is really cool, um, straws. Um, yeah, so it's essentially where that the bare necessities that you need of life um, and essentially giving you amazing plastic free alternatives that are extremely high quality, um, aren't packaged in plastic, aren't loaded with chemicals, um, packaged in a recyclable, reusable or fully compostable packaging. Um, we also have books uh, for awareness. We have activity books, we have different books. We collaborate and do lots of workshops because we believe in building communities around sustainability. Um, we're building some other cool new things as well. We have an online course. If anyone wants to go zero waste in 30 days, don't know where to start and can be really intimidating um, this concept in the first place. But um, one, I thought the products are a tangible way in which, in which you can envision or visualize this lifestyle. And two is the course that kind of takes you through this journey and there is people around you who you can ask questions to and everything is broken down into bite sizes. We have experts from ethical fashion to composting to closet to food to travel, everything you can think of. We currently retail our physical products at about 50 stores across 10 states um, in India and you can also of course find us online which is bearnessstes.in. In a way we're advocating to going back to your roots but also making zero waste the norm and not the exception um, and making it accessible for any, any everyone to basically use these products um, and I think that's what our mission is at Bare Necessities um, and I think we're basically trying through our talks, our workshops, our educational online course, um, our Instagrams, our stories, um, trying to communicate that about how there are easy swaps and changes that you can incorporate into your lifestyle to go plastic free or to be more mindful and produce less waste. <laughs> I've been an environmentalist, I spent lots of time in nature, I studied it, um, I almost was honestly doing it from a very nerdy, academic, elitist perspective at Cambridge looking at environmental issues and I spent some time at the World Health Organization, started to look at it from a health perspective. But it all changed um, when I moved back to India, I started working with waste pickers, um, you know, in Bangalore, really, really close to our fancy international airport and essentially they were collecting all of this waste with their bare naked hand and I would essentially just follow them on my cycle at like 5 a.m. in the morning before work and um, I was just um, of course just totally confronted by our waste problem in a way I hadn't been before but also this to me um, helped me put aside my elitist perspective and just look at it from a ground up perspective and um, I understood that our waste problem was such a social justice issue and there are easy ways in which I can address my own trash and why it was important I, I just um, so yeah, I wanted to start living a waste-free lifestyle for very personal reasons um, and very slowly my colleagues were asking what I was doing, people were noticing things and they were like, hey do you want to do a small talk or a workshop? And that led me to every weekend engaging in um, doing a small talk or workshop. 
slowly people were saying, hey, that's great, thanks for teaching me how to make all of these products, but honestly, I don't have the time to do it. So that's when we started retailing at flea markets and pop-ups on the weekend. And then slowly people were saying, hey, this is great, would you sell to me in bulk? And stores were approaching us. Um, so then we started white labeling for pretty big brands out there. Um, and then at some point I was taking off time off my job, my full-time job, which was at a solar energy company, um, to like do a stock at Google, for example. And um, slowly I think I realized after two years of kind of doing this on the side and two years of working that um, I'm 25, 26, like I'm gonna, if I don't try now, when am I gonna try? Uh, so I decided to just go for it. That's how we began. We wanted to make these products easy and accessible at a one-stop shop. You don't have to go one place for one toothbrush and another place for a soap. And um, the basically we wanted to um, help change behavior and make it easy and accessible for you and I to live a more sustainable lifestyle. Um, I, we are still a really small lean team. I mean, currently we're in my mom's garage, <laughs> um, you know, and we built an office out of this space. But in early days, um, it was basically a one or two person team, which meant I was making the products, I was, you know, getting the sh boxes, um, going to the post office and sending it. Um, I had then one person helping me with manufacturing who said this was her easiest job because she just came here and took a nap and left because there were no orders <laughs> in the early days. Um, and what I realized was though, my biggest marketing tool was just me speaking and connecting with people and building small nano micro communities um, and just getting the conversation started about sustainability um, and hopefully getting people to think about something that they hadn't thought about. So I, I think every weekend, um, almost, I did a little talk or small workshop and that was at different farmers markets, it was at yoga studios, it was at little schools, honestly anyone who was willing to listen to me. <laughs> um, and essentially we just kind of did like a fun little workshop and made a product, people got to take back home products. Um, and I think that was my biggest marketing tool or leverage. And slowly I realized that those people who did come to some of the talks suggested or you know, it was just a word of mouth thing that kind of um, spread quite naturally and quite organically <laughs> and um, you know we're super like even now we take photos on our little um, my mom's iron board and we put like little <coughs> kg cardboard papers that we've gotten from uh, commercial street for like 20 rupees um, and you know use leaves and things that are just totally naturally available around us so it's, honestly we still do things very uh, we're really thrifty in our approach um, and we're super creative and we try and work with whatever we have around us um, but I think about branding, I think it's really important to just be consistent. So suppose you commit to putting out a post every week or a month or every day, just doing that over time and slowly you will see that you're building a small community around what your brand stands for and believes in. So we've done collaborations with like-minded brands um, who we admire and look up to, especially contemporary Indian brands who are building companies for us, um, which I think is really cool and important. Different people are there for different reasons. Um, we have noticed though a lot of young mums who are super, super knowledgeable, really cognizant, know the ingredients in their regular personal care products and want an alternative, um, are our huge kind of advocates. We find um, millennials who basically want to align their consumer choices um, with their values. Huge fast fashion brands such as Forever 21 going out of business is a testament to the fact that there is a change in culture and values. Um, among the young millennials who want to consume and through their consumption choices align with their values. Um, so I think that's a huge kind of um, between 18 to 35 it's, I would say are our uh, biggest customer base. Um, and I think in terms of building a community you know we have students, we have um, enterprises, it's really diverse and I think people have just kind of seen the plastic waste that they're you know, collecting every day. We, we are in India are confronted with our trash on a daily basis. Uh, so I think um, some people feel like they need to rekindle um, a relationship with nature because we're living in this urban concrete jungle. So I think different people are there for different reasons. Mm -hmm. 
honestly we've made a lot uh, but i would say one is just like keep an account um, of your finances in any easy simple way that you can whether it's an excel spreadsheet there are tons of easy accounting softwares uh, for free online but just like keep a track of it because you know sometimes you'll go down and it's like one year into your business and you have no idea um, and that's just you're building history it's it's important to kind of keep that i definitely like was terrible at that um, excel still um terrifies me um but i think that's important so i think the second one is basically collaborating with people whose values are aligned with yours i made the mistake in my early days of collaborating with people um whose values were totally we weren't on the same page but i thought they had a skill that i didn't have so i was compromising on those but that didn't work out because honestly the core of the business um is the values that make us so don't make that mistake <laughs> and three is um a lot of social enterprises face this problem you're trying to solve a really big complex problem right this is the largest global garbage crisis of our lifetime we're trying to find solutions and it's tempting to try and do everything so at, in the early days we did like try to do consulting we try to do products we try to do workshops we try to do tech tech stuff um uh, so maybe honing in and being um you know consistent but also finding that one thing and focusing your energy Uh, most strategically and trying not to do everything because you honestly are just human and you can't do everything so acknowledging um what are your shortcomings and just focus on few things that you have control over that you know you will do well the number one is surrounding yourself with people who inspire you who align with your values who make work fun who are as ambitious and excited and who share this vision that you have created for your brand um and that is through who you partner with who your team is um i think that's the number one thing um because people make the brand there are no products without the people who are making this so i think value people and human resources and um they are your biggest asset so i think that's um why bears like achieve whatever success in our little way we have i think it's because of our people um the second thing I think just like go at it it's going to there're going to be so many ups and downs but um just kind of go through that like just be consistent and um be okay with failure because it's only part of life um so you know just get back up when when you've fallen down I think I know that's cliche but honestly there've been so many ups and downs and I think we wouldn't have been here almost four years if we didn't kind of um get up after we every time we fell off Um and I would say the third one is just be so authentic and genuine to who you you are, who the brand is. Um and just reflect that. Be really honest and authentic. Let the voice of your communications through whatever you put out online just be so so authentic and true to the brand. Mm-hmm.